This video is going to be over adding and subtracting fractions. All right, well, what do we need to remember? Well, we need to remember that fractions should always be written in lowest terms. And when we talk about lowest terms, we talk about simplifying. So lowest terms means to simplify. So remember that a, a, any fraction has to be simplified to its lowest term. All right, this means if you can divide the same number out of the top and the bottom, do it. That means if they have any common factors, you have to divide those out. So for instance, if we have the fraction 18 over 24, the factors of 18, um, 18 and 24 share some factors. So um, one, 1 and 18, 1 times 18, those are factors, 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 6 and 3. In 24, we have 1, 24, 2, 12, um, 6, and 4. So as you can see here, 6 are the common factors, and 6 is the greatest common factor. So we can divide that out. So if you divide 6 by both numbers, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. So that means that 18 over 24 is the same as 3 fourths, and 3 fourths is the simplified fraction of 18 over 24. So remember that all fractions need to be simplified um, as, far, as far as they can go. Now your calculator can do that for you. So make sure that you understand on your calculator how to do that. If you don't understand how to do that, you need to make sure you contact your teacher. Um, but on the new red OGT calculator, if you just type in your fraction 18 and then a, b slash c, 24 equals, it should simplify that down to the lowest term. Now when you add fractions, the most important thing to remember when adding fractions is they must have common denominators. And common, denom common denominators means they have to have the same denominator. You cannot add fractions that have different numbers on the bottom of the fraction, different denominators. They must be the same. So if they are the same, we notice um, we add the numbers, the top, the numerators, the tops, and just carry along the denominator. So in adding fractions, the bottom number always stays the same, or the denominator stays the same. So here it's going to be 5. And then we just add the top numbers, 1 plus 3 is 4. So 1 fifth plus 3 fifth is 4 fifths. Okay, we'll look at the picture. You know, you're wondering why is 1 fifth plus 3 fifths 4 fifths? Well, let's look at the picture. Now, all the pieces must have the same size. Okay, so we have, all of them have to have the same all these pieces are the same size. So one-fifth um, here is colored here with the one. Okay, so here's one-fifth right here. Okay, and then here is three-fifths here. Well, they're, both, they're, they're the same size pieces, so we just count the shaded parts. One, two, three, four. So because we have four shaded parts, we have four shaded and we have five pieces all together. All right, now, what if fractions have um, different denominators? Well, if you have this problem, one-fifth plus three-fourths, you notice that we have a five in the denominator here and a four in the denominator there. Well, the denominators must be the same, so we need to find common denominators. We need to find the denominators that are the same. So if the denominators of the fractions are not the same, you must make them the same before you add them. Okay, well, how do we make them the same? Well, we need to find the, le the least common multiple. Okay, so um, a multiple of 5 is 1 times 5 is 5, and then 10, 15. 20. Those are multiples of 5 because 1 times 5 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15. So here are your multiples of 5. 
Well, what are your multiples of 4? We have 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times 5 is 20. Well, looking at our numbers here, the only thing they have in common is a 20. So we need to make the denominators 20. So how do we do that? Is we have to change this denominator to a 20, and we have to change this denominator to a 20. Well, how do we get from 5 to 20? Well, it's 5 times 4 is 20. So because we multiply, let's do this. Let me erase this here so we can see what we're doing. All right, so if we have 1 fifth and we need to make it equal to 20, 5 times 4 is 20, so we need to multiply the top by 4. We're going to multiply it by the same number. 1 times 4 is 4. So 4 twentieths is the same as 1 fifth. Now if we have 3 fourths and we want to make it equal to 20, we have to multiply 4 by 5 to get 20. So then we have to multiply the top by 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. So our new fractions are 4 twentieths and 15 twentieths. Okay, so let's rewrite our problem. So it would be 4 twentieths plus 15 twentieths equal. Now remember, our denominators stay the same, so we're going to bring over our 20. And 4 plus 15 is 19. So 1 fifth plus 3 fourths equals 19 twentieths. And 19 twentieths is in lowest terms because they do not have any factors in common besides 1. Now that's very confusing. So when you are doing these, if you have a calculator handy, go ahead and use your calculator. So remember, if you have a calculator handy, you would do 1 and then hit your calculator button, A, B slash C, 5 plus 3 fraction key 4 equals. And on your calculator you will see 19 over 20. Now, when we're subtracting fractions, it's the same rule. When subtracting fractions, your denominators have to be the same. Okay, so your denominators have to be the same. So we need to find a common denominator. Well, let's find the multiples of 5 and 3. Okay, so we have 5, 10, 15, and multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Well, we can see here that 15 are our, is our least common multiple, so we need to change this. So 4 fifths has to equal 15 on the bottom. So we have to multiply both, so both the top and the bottom by 3. 4 times 3 is 12. 2 thirds has to equal 15 on the bottom. We have to, 3 times 5 is 15, so we have to multiply the top by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. So our new problem is going to be 12 fifteenths take away 10 fifteenths. Remember our denominator stays the same. 12 minus 10 is 2. That is in lowest terms because the only factors they have in common are 1. Alright, now when adding um, whole numbers. Well, when adding and subtracting fractions and whole numbers, you must change the whole number to a fraction by putting it over 1. So we need to do this. So it needs to be 5 over 1 take away 3 fourths. Well, these denominators are not the same. So this is a 1 and this is a 4. So we need to find the common denominator. Well, in this case, our common denominator can be 4 because the multiples of 1 are 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means this fraction is going to stay the same. And we only have to change the 5 over 1. So to change 
5 over 1 to equal 4 on the bottom, we have to multiply this by 4. So it's 20 over 4. So our new problem, okay, would be 20 over 4 take away 3 fourths. So 4 on the bottom, 20 take away 3 is 17. The most important thing here is to make sure you put your whole number over 1 and then change the denominator. When adding mixed numbers, it's easier to place the fractions up and down and then find the common denominator. So if we have 5 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 1 half, we write it as up and down. So these numbers line up together and then the fractions line up together. Now because um, they are not the same denominator, we need to find a common denominator. Now looking at our fraction, we have a 4 and a 2. Well let's find the multiples of 4 and 2. Well, let's go ahead and do 2 first because it's smaller. So the multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, the multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 16. Well, the least common multiple is 4. So that means that this fraction will stay the same. And we have to change the 1 half. So we're going to go ahead and change the 1 half to have a denominator of 4. So 1 half has to equal 4 on the bottom. So to get to 4, you have to multiply by 2. So we'd multiply it, um, but top number by 2 as well, so 2 fourths. So 1 half actually equals 2 fourths. So our new problem would be 5 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 2 fourths. So our denominators will stay the same, and 1 plus 2 is 3, and then we just add our whole numbers. 5 plus 3 is 8, so it's 8 and 3 fourths. All right, here we need to find, oh, we already did that. We need to find the common denominator, and we did. All right, here is a practice problem. All right, so it says Jacob is making a picture frame from wooden molding. The measurements of the sides of the frame are 4 and 3 eighths by 2 and a fourth. How much molding will Jacob need? Remember, a frame has four sides. Now, because we want to know how much molding he needs, I need to draw a picture because I like to draw pictures and pictures for me are easier. So it says that, so we need to find out what we know, what do we need to new, do and how we're going to answer it and then we check our answer. So what do we know? Well we know that the frame is 4 and 3 eighths by 2 and a fourth. So one side is 4 and 3 eighths and one side is 2 and a fourth. It says that he wants to make wooden molding around the outside of the picture frame. So that means that this side is also two and a fourth and this side is three and four and three eighths. So how much molding will Jacob need? So are we going to find the area what's inside or are we going to find the perimeter what's up around the outside? Well molding goes around the outside so we're going to find the perimeter. Remember, the perimeter means that you have to add up all sides. So we need to add up 4 and 3 eighths, 4 and 3 eighths, 2 and a fourth, and 2 and a fourth. Now this is much easier if you use your calculator, but we'll show you how not to use it. So we can see we have 8, 8, 4, and 4. Well, we know that 8 is a multiple of 4, so we're going to change our fractions with 4 on the bottom to have 8 on the bottom. So to do that, 8 has to be on the bottom. So this has to be multiplied by 2, so the top number has to be multiplied by 2. So it ends up being 2 eighths. So our new problem is 4 and 3 eighths, 4 and 3 eighths, 2 and 2 eighths, 
two and two eighths. So three, okay, so then our bottom number stays the same. And then we add up our top. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we add up our whole numbers. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve and ten eighths. Well, this is not in simplified form because here we have one whole again. So eight, to change eight, ten over eight into a mixed number, eight goes into ten one time with two left over. And then that simplifies down to one fourth. So our new answer is thirteen because we have one and one fourth. thirteen and one fourth. And you can check that on your calculator. Practice problem two. Rebecca has two cups of milk. She pours out one third cup. How much does she have left? Well, what do we know? We know that she pours out, so that means we're going to subtract. So that means we're going to subtract two minus one third. Well, we already know that we need to put this over one. So that means that we need to find a common denominator. Well, we know that three can be the common denominator because a multiple of one is three. So that means that two over one has to equal something over three. So we have to multiply that by three. So six over three. So six over three take away one third equals the three carries over six minus one is five. So she has five over three left, which you can't, um, we have to change this into a mixed number. So three goes into five one time with two left over. So she has one and two thirds cup left over. Hopefully this has helped you understand um, how to add and subtract fractions. Remember to use your calculator if you have it because it is so much easier. Remember the A, B slash C button is the um, button to use so make sure that you're using that. If you have any other questions make sure you contact your teacher.